Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stories That Inspire Us with Janice. Today is Monday, June the 20th, and oh boy, I'm getting better on the dates. Yay! <laughs> Good start to the week. Today, I have an amazing guest, and really, Stories Today is about her stories, and I am so excited to welcome to my podcast today, Amanda Love. Amanda, welcome to the Stories family. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. So Amanda, obviously I know that you're a registered holistic nutritionist and you have quite the interesting background and you also are a podcast host of Physical Emotional Health Secrets with Amanda Love. So we have so much to chat about. First, I want to hear about your story and why you became a registered holistic nutritionist. Yeah, uh, I became a registered holistic nutritionist because I was tired of, for me, I was like, I want people to know that they can get better with their health. Um, my backstory is that I was uh, born six weeks early. I was just so sick all the time, had no idea what was going on. Um, and blood tests just showed that it was normal but they still put me on antibiotics all the time. Sinus infections, sore throats were the big things. Once in a while, I would run a temperature that would go up a teeny bit, but it was still a normal temperature. And I was just sick and my parents didn't know what to do. And my dad and mom divorced when I was six and my dad remarried when I was eight. So there was some trauma there, which I tell people about because I want people to know, I think a lot of our health issues, we ha we are dealing with some trauma that we need to get healed from. Um, but when my parents divorced and my dad remarried, it wasn't an easy journey for me. And I was the oldest. I only have one sister, but she had two kids. And her kids were like, two years old and then the other one my dad was actually dating her as she was pregnant with her second as she was going through a divorce so that's a weird situation at six years old seven years old knowing that but for me it was a lot of suppress the emotions don't share don't speak up and i was the one always getting in trouble and I would always have to stand in the corner and stuff like that. So there was lectures, there was all of that, but fast forward, we moved out of California to Arizona and all of a sudden I was still sick every four to six weeks, but it was better. Um, so when I turned, when I graduated high school, I went into personal training and they were like, I completed that program. Then two weeks later, at 20 years old, I was 20, all of a sudden I just couldn't move. I was so fatigued, I was in so much pain, I was so exhausted, and I didn't know what was going on. And 10 months later, at 20 years old, um, they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia. Wow, and, and as we know in the the health coaching industry in the medical field as well when you are diagnosed with fibromyalgia it's usually such a, a long span from when you are quote unquote initially sick and you went all these years yeah and now you're i don't want to say that you're finally diagnosed but you're finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia that must have been a relief in just a little bit of a sense that you know, okay, this is what I have. Now, what do I do with it? Or how do I heal myself? Yeah, I don't, the funny thing is, I think I was so sick. Like I didn't, I think I thought it was a relief, but like, I can't remember because I'm coming up on 12 years that I get that question asked. Uh, I also was like, what is that? And then I was also the question, which I don't feel like they still know what it is, but um, 
Um, I was also wondering what to do next. And that's the thing. I think everybody is so funny. Everybody says to me, um, I've had so many people say to me, well, you were 20, you were so young to get diagnosed because most people don't get diagnosed till they're thir like in their forties and fifties, even sixties. Right. Yeah. And like they, but a lot of people have told me, they're like, I feel like I probably had it in my twenties. And I just say, well, I did deal with 20, almost 21 years of being sick. So it's not like I didn't have any years of not, of not being sick. I probably was sick my whole life and it just multiplied. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, okay, you're diagnosed with whatever your health condition is. What are you going to do to get better from it? Right. And as you said, when people were asking you those questions, being sick every four to six weeks, like that's crazy. Yeah. And when I was, um, when I, I would say when I was six to 14 years old, it was pretty much every week I was sick. Um, I would go once in a while, I would go every two months, but that was very rare that I would do that. Mm -hmm. And I was very sick all the time and I didn't know what was going on. A lot of my, um, a lot of learning difficulties also. So I didn't mention that where I just struggled with school. I struggled with math. I struggled with reading. I struggled with writing. I had to get tutoring for that. And I also got held back the year before we moved to Arizona because I just, I switched schools and stuff like that. And I tested and they're like, we think it's better the last couple months, instead of being in seventh grade, you go back to sixth grade. And then we moved to Arizona like that December. So the spring I went back a grade and then in December and stuff, but it was very hard um, knowing okay, I have to play catch up all the time, catch up, catch up, catch up. And like, I was never always, I've never been, I wasn't outgoing at all. So it's just like, it was very hard to realize, okay, why am I dealing with all these health issues? And I have a sister who didn't deal with any health issues and stuff like that. So it's interesting. Uh, yes, it is very interesting. And I'm just, thinking too in that young age being a young teenager and going through all that and just kind of I think of a, almost like a yo-yo because yeah. okay the yo-yo's up here and you're okay maybe for a couple of days but then it goes down because you get sick again That's and add in, add in the fact that you have you start with your periods and my periods weren't regular for a very long time, probably into my twenties, they started, but it took like all that time from like, I forget when I started my first period, maybe I think it was like 12, I think, to all the way into my mid twenties. I feel like I finally started to get regular, but like that was also the thing where I was like, dealing with fatigue and exhaustion and hormones with that time of the month and all of that too. So, and, and they always seem to could, could side together. So I would probably be done with being sick, but then it would be time for that period. So also that was a factor. So yeah, the factor, which was such an overwhelming process, yeah like of everything else and then dealing with that so it's not only overwhelming to you physically but also your emotional the emotional turmoil of being overwhelmed i can't even fathom that that is just insane and i feel so bad that you had to go through all that but through that yeah you you've learned so much. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, 
people are like, it's a, you, when you go through so much, and I've gone through so much just in the last two years, not even with, and stuff like that, but it's, you start to become known as like an overcomer because you've gone through so much. And like, when I went to the rheumatology place, and this was like one of the top rheumatology places in the country. And it was like 20 minutes away. And this is in Mesa, Arizona. And I walked out of the room and my grandmother told me later on, cause I asked her, I knew they were, they didn't want to say it directly to me, but they were told her, well, we think your granddaughter's depressed. Well, of course. Looking back now, I'm like, of course they said that, but I think I think at that age I was like, well, I'm not depressed, but like now looking back, I could see, yeah, it was a lot. And one of the things they told me was, okay, here's a brochure, not giving any advice really that is gonna help me. Mm -hmm. Um I think I believe I still have it. And they also were like, take this medication. This medication is going to help you. And it was Cymbalta. And it, if anyone looks it up, it's a, it's, there's a great website called drugs.com for any like way to find out medication side effects. It's an antidepressant. At 20 years old, they're putting me on that. Well, as you said, with living with that overwhelming process of being sick every four to six weeks, I understand to a certain level how, why they would feel that way. However, I want to back up a little bit with that because I think it's so important for people to yeah. realize the, the history of how you were feeling when it was happening and anybody can look at that and say, okay, you know, Amanda was depressed during that time frame. And I just want to scream and say, help this young lady, you know, <laughs> let's not just yeah. <laughs> label. I, I think if it's sometimes it's more of a label to put like maybe a little bandaid on it. All right, let's get to the root cause. Yeah. Why are all these things happening? Why is she getting sick? every four to six weeks. Okay, you were then diagnosed with fibromyalgia. What do you do from there? Um, that's the thing. I think that's the thing is they do label people with whatever the diagnosis. And then they're not like, oh, let's get to the root cause because that's not what doctors do, right? Um, yeah, they also were like, well, she should do medication. And then they said, after the medication, they said physical therapy. So I did physical therapy. Um, I did swimming and weights. And that's the thing that I'm not overweight. I've never been overweight. And fibromyalgia is not a thing that is an overweight issue, I tell people. You could look completely normal, healthy, whatever body, and you could be so much pain. That's the thing about fibromyalgia. And I would just come out crying. I would be in so much pain. And right next door was a pain center. And so I did two treatments of this thing where they would shoot like a needle. You would wear a hospital gown. They would shoot, it was a regular doctor's office. They would shoot this needle into all the trigger points. So your neck, your back, shoulders, and you were awake and there was like which if you have 12 of the 14 trigger points then that's sort of how they diagnose who with fibromyalgia and so i would just come out crying because i was in so much pain and the blood sugar would crash so they would say you have to have juice and cookies to raise it back up after they did the treatments and they wanted me to do three treatments. And my grandma was like, no, you're not doing that. And so that was a big thing. And this was in late October, November, 2020. 
Um, fast forward to the spring mm -hmm. of 2021, my grandmother saw a little newspaper clipping. I don't know if people read newspapers, but like, I don't know if people do nowadays, but this was like 10 years ago, right? Even 10 years ago, I don't think people read newspapers, but um, said wellness talk by wellness chiropractor. It was only 10 minutes away. And he, he said to her, if your granddaughter has fibromyalgia and she's only 20, she's been very sick a long time. And that's when my grandmother was like, okay, this, this person gets it. And she says a light bulb went off in her head. And that's when she was like, okay, she needs to work with him. Wow. And you mentioned about, I just, you know, a little sidebar newspapers. My dad read a newspaper every day. <laughs> That's that generation. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you I don't even think she read, I don't even think she read the newspaper, but yeah. She, but the purpose is like, she saw that and she took action, which is phenomenal. Yeah. So now obviously you go, I assume you go to this physician and start working with them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, well, she was in, she did some nursing and stuff like that. Not when I was growing up, but she raised me along with my mom. So she was the driving force to getting me well. I always tell people that, um, it's coming up on two years this summer that she, she's passed, but, um, but the big thing was he tested me for things like he tested me for saliva testing, did cortisol testing. Um, but I found out I had two genes that predisposed me to a gluten insensitivity. Highest in his practice at the time, both parents gave me that, lucky me, a soy sensitivity, egg sensitivity, dairy sensitivity. And those are the things that like, I had to get rid of, and I did an elimination diet. It's coming up on 10 months next month. And that was one of the things that really got me to getting better. Wow. So you not only went, obviously went through this, you, I don't want to say that you're out on the other side, but you, you go through this emotional turmoil to find out what's going on and you became a, a registered holistic nutritionist. Well, before that, you became a personal trainer. Yeah. So what happened? Are you still treating with a physician, number one? Are you still treating with them? Um, okay. No, I only lasted with that position for like, I only did eight months. And that's the thing. It's, it's so expensive to keep with somebody because it's out of pocket and stuff uh -huh. like that but i did do other things afterwards so i'm not saying that was like the total answer because mm -hmm. i was still getting sick i think a lot of it was like i had to get back to like having a life again if i didn't never really had a life so mm -hmm. like staying away from those foods i still do today but it's also, I tell people, this is why I bring people on my podcast is because it's not just one thing that's going to fix you. So maybe you're dealing with your hormones, then maybe that's something you need to work on. And that's something I feel like I probably need to work on. But for me right now, it's working on the trauma mm -hmm. and doing the inner healing. And it's, and it's been rough. I'm not going to lie. It's hard. And I'm still like struggling with it. The last couple, I've been doing it for a couple months now where I'm just like, it's exhausting to go through your trauma, but it's being pushed to the front right now, which it's forcing me to realize, okay, I got to deal with this now. So I don't bring it to whatever relationships are or whatever like whoever my future husband is or my future kids. Right. And you're being proactive with that, which is amazing because I think when you go through something as traumatic as that, and now, as you said, working on your trauma for seven months and 
and vying for that internal healing, that is exhausting on so many different levels. After you became a personal trainer, when was it in the point of your journey that you became a, a holistic nutritionist? Um, yeah, so I couldn't do anything after the personal training program. So I didn't do anything for like a year, a year and a half. And then when I started going to the wellness chiropractor, I was like, okay, I'm going to do a certification that's online. And this was for health coaching. Mm -hmm. And I completed that and I love, and it was great, but I didn't feel like I was like, I need more. So then I was like, I found a program in Canada and I was like, I'm going to try, they had like an intro package. So I tried that and I'm like, okay, I want to take the full program. And it took me like four years to complete it. So I completed it in like 2017, but I was like, I want to get to the learn how, how does the body systems work? What are the root causes of why we get sick? What is like a really good health history, not just a basic health history, but like a health history where it will tell me, okay, you have these symptoms and you have a lot going on in your digestive system. And like, I've also taken courses on like gut health also, and like all of these other courses, culinary nutrition has been my, was my latest one because I was like, Last year, last summer, I was like, everybody tells me all the time they don't know how to cook. So I want to know, okay, yeah, I want to know the information, but I also want to know how to do cooking classes online and in person, because I think that's the big thing. It's like, everybody's like, I eat healthy, but do you really? And nobody really knows how to cook these days. That is so true. And not only do people not know how to cook, sometimes it's, you know, because we're such in a rush, it's easier just to pick something up or make something up at home that is quick. But a lot of times too, what happens is when we go to the grocery store, you know, I was one of those people way back when, before I became a personal trainer and yeah. certified health coach, I didn't yeah. read labels. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think people don't read the labels. And I talk about this all the time. Everybody's always like, well, gluten free. And I'm like, and it gets marketed that gluten free is healthy. It's not. It is not healthy. And if you look at a lot of gluten free products, which I tell people, if it comes in a box, then you probably don't want to have it. But if you're, it's a holiday. It's not going to kill you have a gluten-free cookie or whatever. Right. I mean, right. like, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm more the type where I like to make my own desserts mm -hmm. if I'm going to make dessert and stuff. Cause I like to have a healthier, like a chocolate avocado pudding is delicious or something. I like to make my own desserts, but it's not going to hurt you to have that ice cream or whatever. It's not going right. to hurt you. Right. But, Make sure to eat vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. Um, don't just be like, well, I'm going to eat bad all day long because it's a holiday. Eat good, eat good, like a couple meals and then, then you could have whatever the cake or whatever it is. And you don't have to have every bad thing that's at that holiday meal. Just have one or two things. Right, because I think generally as a society, I mean, I know I was certainly guilty of it before my uh, weight loss journey. It's like, oh, there's a bag of chips. Oh, there's chocolate cake. Well, I'm going to have all of it. And, you know, maybe it's that, you know, and I'm from the generation of the clean plate club, finish yeah. everything on your plate. Well, now if you go, you know, over to, uh, you know, Target or one of those stores, a lot of the dinner plates now are quite large and some of them don't even fit in your cabinet. So if you're from the clean plate club generation, yeah, 
you're literally eating everything on your plate. So that may necessarily not be too good for you. But I think in, in moderation, of course. I think that's the thing in moderation. And I think people are like, it's it like, oh, I have to do, I have to go overhaul my diet all right away. And it's like, well, yeah, you're, you, we might have to work on your food, but what is your relationships like? What is your sleep like? If you're dealing with some trauma, you can eat as good as you think you're eating. But as soon as that trauma issue is come, come straight up, you're going to go for the cookies. You're going to go for the cake and stuff like that. And that's the thing. I tell people, if it's such a struggle and, and stuff like that, just don't keep it in the house. Save it for like when you go out. Because nowadays they have restaurants where they have desserts and stuff that are like allergy friendly. So do that. Like don't have it in your house if it's such a temptation. Right, exactly. And I my I often talk about my <laughs> excuse me, my nemesis, which is uh, a bag of potato chips. Can that be trusted around a bag of potato chips? No. I do have some chips upstairs that are tortilla chips, but if I'm going to have some, my rule, my favorite number is five. So I, you know, I'm a big girl. I can count to five and I put five on my napkin and that's it. I put them away out of sight. And I think a lot of times we get into those routines because they're normal and normal feels comfortable but yet we're still not dealing with the uh the past trauma which really is key to a really good overhaul for sure yeah and i think trauma is such a big thing and like you don't know what your trauma is until it's it starts coming <laughs> And stuff like that and it's hard it's really hard um i did something back in april and i was like okay i had memories come up from like when i was like 13 years old and th that was the more that was the more hurtful one was the one from when i was 13 than the one that happened like a year ago so mm -hmm. some of your traumas are more sensitive even though they happened way long ago and then some aren't as like they, they're not as bad and stuff like that wow so at what point did you become a new um a holistic nutritionist yeah so i became a nutritionist when i was like okay i did the health coaching program and then i was like i'll do i'll go into a holistic nutritionist and stuff like that. So you were obviously diving deeper and deeper because it sounds like to me, the more information that you had and you were able to consume it in a way that you literally wanted to know more, which brings you to where you are now. And now obviously you're helping your clients. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I like to learn. So I also was doing that last year, the holistic nutrition program. I was doing a psychology of eating program because I was like, people need to realize our emotions play such a big part in our health journey. And so what is your like emotional eating, your binge eating and all that, but also your fatigue, all of it just relates back to our emotions and stuff like that. So if you're struggling, that's something I like to cover also. But I want people to know, like, that's the thing with health. It's not one size fits all approach. And that's why I tell people I like to do it individualized. So I'm not going to say you have to do an elimination plan. You might be, what you might just be working on Let's get your sleep back. Let's get your sleep. So I tell people the number one thing, if your sleep's messed up, then how are you supposed to eat healthy? How are you supposed to cook? 
how are you supposed to have good relationships with people? Like if your sleep's so messed up, then how is it, how are you even supposed to do anything with your life? You know, Amanda, that is so true. And I love what you said about one size does not fit all. And the sleep, I know that I've suffered with that this past year with, with my son's accident and can certainly relate to that on so many different levels, not just my, my son's accident, but where, where can people get a hold of you? Where can our viewers and listeners contact you? Yeah, so they could contact me. So my Facebook is Amanda Lee's Love. That's where I'm, that's where my social media stuff is. And I have a Facebook group called Physical Emotional Health Secrets. And that's the name of the podcast too. And it has 132 episodes talking about how to cook easy, simple meals, how to budget, like with me, a lot of nutrition advice. And I bring on experts that deal with things that I'm not an expert in. So I've had the pelvic pain experts. I've had the hormone expert. And I've had people who have who actually can help people with trauma because that's not my expertise, but I feel like that's something people need to know. So there are trauma experts out there and stuff like that. And this week's episode was an expert on autoimmune. So like there's so many experts out there. If you feel like I'm not the right expert, then I can help guide you to the right expert. That's wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing that information. Amanda, your story touched me at my heart mm -hmm. because, you know, young lady going through so much and yet here you are um, in a position to inspire us. Your story is fantastic. And I can't thank you enough for being my special guest today. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. You know, folks, Amanda's story is told in such a way to give honor to her journey and to inspire others who suffer from such things as Amanda did and still, still does, but yet her overall overwhelming process to help others is just so inspiring. And that's why she's today's features guest on stories that inspire us. I wanna thank you all for being here today. And remember, if you have a story or if you know someone who has a story that inspires us, please have them reach out to me. My name is, your, my name is Janice and I am the host of Stories That Inspire Us. Today, it was Amanda Love who inspired us. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.